Let's start. Let's start the game with podcast. So of course, I'm Ryan Turford alongside the ghost of the most Drew McMillan and the Brock star Brock McLaughlin. Hello. Hey. It's, it's like we just ran through this whole rigmarole. Yeah, well, I mean, we had to introduce, introduce ourselves, and now we're introducing ourselves for the podcast. Because the Drew, podcast you, itself also is going to be up at game yeah. later. Drew, the fashion police called. You wore the same shirt on the show last week. I know. I really like this shirt, though. It, and Xbox gave it to me. Have you, so. have, you, have you uncovered what it is yet? No, I still don't know what it is. <laughs> it, is it is still very weird, but I definitely see the llama now. I yeah, mean, it's some llamas. kind of llama. We know yeah. that. Mm. Yeah. Who, know, who knows what else is going on? It's course. like one of the few graphic tees that I own. It was either this or the Zelda shirt. It is very soft. It is. Mm-hmm. You, you could mm-hmm. wear the Zelda shirt if you want. Brock mm-hmm. Brock didn't need to wear a graphic tee, though. Uh, I did wear a graphic tee underneath this. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, like, it, there's a, it's like two bunnies on the beach sun tanning. When wait, it gets wait hot and sweaty at two well. in the morning, like mm-hmm. definitely the hoodie's coming off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Hot and sweaty because of the uh, heat or because of our bodies oh, together? Yeah. Well, it, the heat of our bodies together. Yeah. Oh. So audio I'm listeners or or video <laughs> listeners to uh, the Game Moose podcast, of course, this episode is live during Extra Life. Um, so if you're listening to this later, of course, you, you missed the boat. I'm sorry. Mm. Um, of course, uh, you can check out our full archives this week over at gamedetachedboost.com slash video. They'll be going up yeah. as the week progresses. Throughout the week. It's because 24 hours is a lot to post at once. So just... Chill the fuck out. We don't want to break the YouTube. <laughs> here. Um, so we're going to ch- jump into the show proper. So as coming up this episode, we're going to talk about uh, BlizzCon. BlizzCon happened this week, and I can't wait to talk about it. They BlizzCon. announced some fucking crazy shit, man. Yes, they did. Holy cow. I was like le- going through my Facebook feed, and I was like, excuse me, what? How many new races? All you had to do is go to my Twitter feed, and it was just, it, wow. just, it was the whole day. I have bonkers. symbol monkeys in my head right now. I, I do not understand what's going on. Something you will I, understand, big though. Big changes to World of Warcraft. Oh, okay. like they introduced oh, okay. like a lot of new content, which is crazy. We will also be talking about the Paris Games Week press conference for Sony as oh, well, which yeah. is something you know about. I do. Also, here's a hot tease for you. Ooh. Fucking vanilla WoW servers are coming back. I, d- I know, I can't wait. Prepare to cream your pants. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, people were freaking the fuck out yesterday over there. Yeah. Although we still really don't know when it's coming. Is but this a feed stream now? I like this. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. yeah. This is a lot more comfortable. Like, normally we're behind a like a folding table. We're very close. We're, yeah. we're like I'm, a panel. Our, our thighs usually touch. Yeah, like I was surprised. Yeah. I'm glad I dropped all that weight. It's a little bit more comfortable. You're looking really mostly. good. Yeah. Yeah, you're Thanks, looking man. really good. Thanks, man. I'd hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hit, uh, I hit 70 pounds. I lost, I've lost 70 pounds since February. That's as awesome, of, man. As of uh, uh, Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So, yeah. yeah. It's a good progression. Yeah, you can do it too, you, kids. I believe almost, in you. If you you wanted, almost lost as much weight as we did podcast this year. That's right. That's yeah. true, because this is episode 101, 101. of Game Moose. Yeah. A palindrome, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, get hyped. Yeah, uh, but first, speaking of losing weight, guess what console lost some weight this year? The Xbox One. Let's talk about the Xbox One X. Uh, it didn't really technically lose. it went up in weight actually yeah. it's heavier <laughs> i don't know if you felt that fucking thing it's a brick yeah yeah it weighs a lot it weighs eight and a half pounds but it's tiny it's yes. smaller it's slimmer but more compact right it, so this week brock you put up a review of the xbox one x yes. over at brockstargaming.com a- am i the only one who's played it so far nope you have it i don't have it yet but, but you played it, it. okay yeah, cool. I was just checking. So we're yes. going to talk about. I, I will. Oh, I right. will politely uh, plug also a uh, friend of the show, Jonathan Orr's uh, uh, article over on CBC about uh, the Xbox One X. I was helping him do some technical stuff with it uh, in the office on uh, Wednesday, and so yeah, I get to horse around with it a little bit then too. So cool. yeah, nice. cool. Yeah. That's sweet. So, Brock. What do you think about the Xbox One X? Guys, <laughs> I, I know you wrote a bra- pretty lengthy article about it, but for the folks at home. Yeah, let's, yeah, give us like, the Coles let's let's get in the Coles note. I mean, I think it was the same thing I talked about back in January when we last talked about it, or like not last time, but first talked about it. There's still no exclusives. Uh, it's a powerful system, which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, it runs really well. It depletes load times about 10 to 15 seconds per game. It looks a little bit better, but there's not much reason to buy it. It yeah. is very expensive. So there's no killer app right now. There's no, no like, well, I, the closest thing you get to that is, uh, I guess, what, Forza? Mm-hmm. Forza 7? Forza's the first game, but it wasn't available for testing. I believe it came out either last night or this morning. So you can mm-hmm. now play it, like, with its full power. Okay. Oh, so, the, we, so it wasn't, wasn't the 4K, 4K version yet. And this is the problem. There's all these lists of Xbox One X enhanced games, but not all those games have gone live yet. Right. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, a bunch of them are like TBA or in the future. Mm-hmm. So like uh, I was playing like Assassin's Creed, uh, which looked great, 
but I couldn't get a full, full appreciation of what it was because the enhanced version isn't ready yet. I was playing Forza, which looked great, but again, so like there's, it's, you know, you, you, you can't just expect to go into this and be like, everything's going to look perfect off mm -hmm. the bat. The, uh, we were playing Gears, which again, looked great, but we still weren't there yet because the Gears is the one enhanced, but it's not, because there's two different modes too. Now there's 4K mode and there's like a UHD mode that yeah. upscales it. Yeah. So there's totally, and every game is kind of different. There yes. doesn't seem to be any... You well, know, set system in place. No, there's a list. There's a very complicated list. You can see what's what. Mm -hmm. You know, what is 4K, what's UHD enhanced, what's HDR, what's 10-bit, and all that shit. Um, you can go to, uh, like, Xbox's page, and there's, like, there's a whole list of what's coming and so on. But mm -hmm. it's a little it's a little frustrating, because you just want... I just, you just want your games to look better. Yeah, and, like, for review, I think we had Gears of War, and I really didn't want to go play back. I really didn't want to go back and play that. I didn't yeah. like it the first time around. I didn't oh, really want to play it again. Assassin's Creed, I still can't get into, and that was kind of available at the end. Call of Duty became available right at the end, too, but it was too close. Um, I'm trying to think of what else other ones I looked at, and really, there wasn't, like, there wasn't any really great examples of games yet. Yeah. Um, because right. they haven't been produced for the Xbox One X yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because th from what I was reading, a lot of those were just reviews in progress. Mm -hmm. Like, just, you, just like your review as well yeah. is also a review in progress. It, it would be very hard to give it a, ver a final review until next year. Okay. Until we know what Microsoft has up their sleeve and what kind of games they're putting out, how they're putting games out on it, um, it, it we don't know. We have yeah. no idea what we're going to see. And it's kind of like the PS4 Pro when that launched as well, because it mm -hmm. had the same issue where a lot of the enhancements weren't there yet mm -hmm. at launch. And then even then, there wasn't a list of what the enhancements actually were. Mm -hmm. You just kind of had to guess for a lot of games. Like some games like Tomb Raider did it really well, where in the menus, it totally told, told you what all the settings were uh, for enhancements, because you could toggle between different enhancement styles, like mm -hmm. either 60 FPS at 1080 or uh, 4K or however you wanted to handle it. Um, which I guess on Xbox, it, it sounds like it's a lot of the same. Mm -hmm. And it does look better if I tried it on two TVs. I tried it on a 4K TV and a 1080p TV, and it does make it look better on 1080p TV. The, the, okay. the super sampling, it, it does as they super call sample. It. Yeah. it does make it look better. Yeah. So if you really care about like pixels and stuff, then you'll like it. It it is worth it. But if you have an Xbox One S right now, I just don't see the reason to just jump into an Xbox One X yet. Now. If you had the original Xbox One, though, then yes. what do you think about that situation? Uh, well, I'd still probably suggest probably buying an Xbox One S. But if you already have a 4K TV and you're like investing in the future, then maybe go for an Xbox One X. Again, it is very expensive. It's also going to be like a really good product probably in a couple of years. Yeah. But yeah, just right Perhaps. now, it just hasn't been. It's going to be it, we're, it's going to be, you know, depending on what Sony does now, too. Like if they're going to be putting out games that are going to be in 4K quality and stuff. Right. Otherwise, developers are going to have to set back. Yeah. To is there going to be a PS4 Pro two or mm -hmm. Pro or the Super, PS5, the Super Pro, yeah, or, or a PS5, yeah, That's, which is rumored to be the next to be iteration like, and like be fully backwards compatible with PS4 stuff, or are they just going to jump ahead? I'm it is Sony, so yeah. probably not. <laughs> I'm assuming that all the pr companies that once they they all went to this. Basically, the consoles themselves are basically PCs. PCs. Now. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. once they, they went they, to that model, I don't think they won't do it where it doesn't support your previous purchases. Mm -hmm. they, they've basically been PCs for a while. It's just they've been weird PCs. So, like the Xbox uh, Xbox 360 was Power PC based, right? It was using old like Mac processors essentially, which is weird. They Very were using weird. Intel processors. Um, but then, like the biggest thing was the the PlayStation Three, which was the infamous cell processor, right? And that thing was super bizarre and nobody knew how to code for it and it sucked, right? Um, so, you know, remember they're going to put one of those in your toaster? <laughs> that, that's weird. That's true. Yeah. I, I they do, were going to do that. It, and the Xbox One X is, like, it is the most powerful console on the, like, on the market, though. They're not yeah, wrong. They, they, they are wrong. Yeah. It is, like, two times, three times faster than the PS4 Pro. Like, it is significantly faster. It's not very loud. Like, it's not uh, much louder than my S. It's got a it's got a really cool cooler in it. This is mm -hmm. one of the, uh, by cool, I mean neato, but also cool in, in terms of temperature. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this That's is one of the reasons why it's really hot. It's basically the entire top portion of it is this big um, condensation cooler thing. So basically, it's it's, it's a big block of, uh, like, aluminum with, like, a, a, a sink that goes on to the uh, processor. And then inside it, there's liquid, but only 
a, like a small amount of liquid. It's not completely filled. So what happens is basically it heats up, evaporates, and then the top of it cools it off again. And that system keeps it even cooler. It was like specially like industrial design. There is no other cooler like this for a CPU out there. Mm -hmm. They use them in like big, like, like expensive servers and shit like that, but not in like small, you know, like consumer and uh, uh, like electronics. This is like one of the first times they've done that. It's really neat. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. So it really, like, I put my hand on top of the X after running it for a while, and it's warm, but it's not hot. The back gets really hot. The I would not keep that thing in a cupboard. Yeah, like, that no, thing no, will no. heat the fuck up. But, but the fan noise, the nice thing about it is the fan noise is very, very low. There's it a is. a very small fan in the back it's of it. It's not very loud. Um, I know True Achievements put out a very good, like, chart that shows, like, the difference between all three systems, the Xbox yeah. One, the Xbox S, and the X, and how loud they are. And really, like, the X and the original Xbox are pretty similar. The S is a little quieter, yeah. which is to be expected. Yeah. I know Digital Foundry has been, like, geeking the fuck out all week, too, on, like, stats and stuff for that. Obviously, yeah. like, yeah. way more in-depth than, like, I could ever get, um, which is cool. Um, I just want to see what's coming out. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, we can talk about how powerful it is, but if you don't have a great game to play. Yeah, like, right now we have Super Lucky Sale launch next week. Yep. I have Would a review of that coming. It is... It is not great, uh, especially after playing Mario for two weeks straight. It is really hard to go to another platformer. Can, can you give review impressions of that game? Can yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think uh, I think it came up yesterday. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, it did. Yeah, uh, the reviews are all over the place, and most yeah. people feel the same way Brock does. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a I stinker, think right? it was developed for VR, and they changed it to an Xbox game because there's a lot of weird motion control things that are kind of okay. stuck there. Because it was, and a, like, the original you, was an Oculus game. Yeah, yeah I think the second one was supposed to be an Oculus game too. Because you can't move the camera very much and you can't see shit. It's really weird That's and like no it gets really hard. And then like it's, it is excruciating hard at points and it's very confusing. And then it gets really easy. You're like, what the fuck? You like die like 700 times and you're like, for no reason because it's really cheap and the enemy radius seems really off. I don't know, it's weird. Um, and then after that, like next year, all we know is we got Crackdown Three coming, yep. and we have State of Decay. Stated State of Decay. State, State of Decay, Decay is too. weird. Oh, we haven't heard about that in ages. Well, no, no we just know it's coming like early. Yeah. But we don't. Yeah, like we don't know much about it. Uh, yeah. PUBG is in December. And PUBG, it's but later for later in the show. PUBG is not going to push the limits of the Xbox One X like right. at all. Uh, Crackdown Three. Crackdown. Crackdown Three doesn't look very like uh, 4K ready. Also, what? like. It's a cell shaded game. Like it's it's also a shell shaded game. Like it's like a heavy, like sort of like it has like a very cartoony look. So why would you mm -hmm. care? Yeah. Like with four K stuff, it's it's like the photorealistic stuff that you care about. I want fucking like, Halo Six in four K. Like give me yeah, the, like the most yeah. beautiful Halo ever. I want a game like 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 Uncharted, right? Like Uncharted is a game that has sort of like this depth and and sort of rich look to it. Mm -hmm. Play, uh, PlayStation has a couple of games like that. They've got that Last of Us. And um, you know what will look really good on it? Fucking Scalebound. Like Horizon. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah. <laughs> no, Scalebound too was soon, fucking man. Too soon, man. Too soon. would have been amazing. But, but like, but Xbox doesn't have any games like that other mm -hmm. than maybe Halo. Mm -hmm. And even that, that, Halo still has a bit of a, it still has a bit of a look to it where yeah. they can like fake it. Yeah. You know, like I want a game that like, like what, what are we talking about? I'm like, sure we'll get another Gears. I'm sure we'll get another Horizon, which will look beautiful. Mm -hmm. But we need something else that like, new fans can come to because at this point yeah. in the series like you're not just going to hop into like a series like that yeah yeah but like and that's the thing we like, need original ips uh, xbox has been nothing but cancel games for the last mm -hmm. two years um and like w when you talk about like what hot franchises do they have and we've said it halo gears what else oh halo 5 looks really good on the xbox one x it age runs of, age really of empires? good like should we yeah. get excited about age of empires the but, jurassic park that, game we know is coming like we but that doesn't look very like but again that's not gonna be like super high fidelity because no. it's like it's a it's a it's, cheap game it's, well, it's a top-down game yeah right? like in terms of triple a microsoft games I, there doesn't seem to be many in the pipeline that we know of yeah i'm really hoping that they're gonna have like an event and just blow us out of the water and, and like be like oh and this and this and this i and think this. that's what they're kind of waiting and, for but that is. makes me curious when they're gonna do that is it gonna be ces is it going to be, or is it going to be E3? And that's a long time to wait. No, I think they're going to have their own event. Phil Spencer specifically mm. mentioned at E3, they, when asked the same question, that there are a lot more games in the pipe that were sort of started when he took over. Yeah. But not all, most of them aren't ready for prime time. Yeah. So the idea is like, it sounds like next year is when we're going to start hearing about I, I think again, it's, 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 it's the ghost of Don Matrick again, right? Mm. Like they, they, they realized they had to shift gears right away. And now they're playing catch up, right? They've had like 
two or three years of like, okay, we're canceling games, canceling games, and getting things started up. We're in that gap where those games aren't ready to be shown yet, which sucks because we really want to know what the, what they've got. They've got to have something. You gotta have something that's really gonna leverage the power of that system. Also, if they're gonna show them next year, are they gonna actually come out next year? Or are we gonna have to wait until 2019? Yeah. Like, how long are we gonna have to wait for these games are now gonna show? But if they've been in development since uh, Phil Spencer took over, that's at least three years. Yeah. Right. So they have to be kind Maybe of getting close. ready. Yeah, because like, we're talking four to five year development. Otherwise, it's gonna be like a surprise. These games are all coming out in the next six months. We will look really fucking good on them because Sony does not do that. Sony's like, look at these games that might come out next year. Yeah. Microsoft could be like, yeah, all these games are coming out August, September, October. Get them. Yeah. Like, go out there, get an yeah. Xbox One X today. Yeah. Like, these games are coming. Because you also have to remember yeah. the fallout factor as well, where I think a lot of people learn from that. And maybe Microsoft has learned that same lesson as well, where they, they're not ready to show these games till E3 of next year. And some of them might be out in that fall. Like, That's a long time to wait, though, to see, like, they, I guess they must have something, or do but CES. I also think well, that means that you're spending, in our case, $600 plus on faith that Microsoft has has something good company. Yeah. As opposed to knowing, yeah, this is in the pipe. And I'm talking, like, we need, like, a few games here. Like, we yeah. need, like, five, six, like, true 4K games. Yeah. yeah. Now like, this at is least, all... and that's, that is, that is very small. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is all talking from the outside of sort of the mm -hmm. Microsoft uh, echo chamber. I mean, I think that... Anyone who, again, the target audience for this are people who are Xbox hardcores, who people who only play on Xbox, mm -hmm. all play all the third party games on Xbox and, and everything else. Like a lot of those people just prefer Xbox over PlayStation because they like the controller better or like the services better or whatnot. So they're going to be the people who buy this console. Um, and, and they don't necessarily, for some of those people, they don't necessarily need that one or two big games right away to justify that purchase for them. Whereas I think that what what you guys are saying is correct from like an outsider perspective. Why would someone choose that over PS4 except for those reasons? Like if they really like the Xbox specific console for specific Xbox things, I guess. Because again, the PS4 has so many great exclusives, especially games from Japan. Like yeah. for someone like me who loves games from, made in Japan, like where where else are you going to play them, right? Like, you, like if I wanted to play Persona 5 or near or neo like i can't play those on xbox as much as i kind of would want to i can't so that's why i i'm again more leaning in favor of ps4 so again i think it's sort of um i just don't like to paint with a broad broad brush here because even though they yes they their first party situation is a bit dire right now they have a few games coming like state of decay and crackdown yeah to look forward to but yeah you're absolutely right like what's the future for this console and i think i think my biggest think problem is those two games you just named, I'm not looking forward to. Right. At all. Could care less about either of those but games. But State of Decay is actually a good game. Is State of Decay, I'm more interested in Crackdown, super don't give a fuck. I really uh, like the first State of Decay. I'm very excited to see, like, more, but we haven't seen very much. I, I'm just I'm just zombied out. Yeah, we I have mean, still, let's, let's be that's real. True. Like, there's so many fucking zombie games. Because mm -hmm. we got that, what, the uh, the other game used to be called Dead Don't Ride, but is now being called... Uh, um, the Zombie Horde one? From Days Gone. Days Gone, yeah. yeah. So we got that, you know, Last like, of Us 2, kind of. Like, it's, yeah, like, zombie-ish. Zombie COD just came out, and that's yeah. zombified. Like, yeah, but to be fair, that's PUBG, always zombie and it's fucking zombie yeah. mode. Yeah. Uh, fuck, yeah. There's just, there's... It's all over the place. Um, also, uh, uh... uh Fortnite is is heavy into the zombie mm -hmm. shit too, right? So I, I'm a little burned down on it, but whatever. I mean, if it's a good game, it's a good game. I can't argue with that. Yeah. Also, that like something that hasn't really been talked about um, on the Xbox One X, the Dolby Atmos is incredible. The like for sound like the sound head, sound stuff, it Ooh. sounds amazing. Even like on like a baseline like soundbar or like your shitty speakers, that thing sounds crazy it the like the load up screen from like everything that comes with it is crazy good yeah so that's like uh object oriented sound so mm -hmm. the idea is that like it's it's this weird 3d sound where they can apply uh, uh sound position to an actual 3d object in the space mm -hmm. so as it moves it can dynamically shift it around Other, uh, before they used to have to do like weird tricks with how things would fade in and out of left and right channels and with Dolby 5.1, but these days, they, like they can, like with Atmos, they can really genuinely make like that frog that's like chirping is actually like the source of the sound, and it f dynamically fades based on like position and rotation and mm -hmm. all kinds of crazy stuff. And then they can have like all the cool like Dolby effects applied to it. Is it in like a concert hall or 
the woods or is it in like a padded room and mm-hmm. like the reverb and stuff based on that. So it's yeah, if you're a sound nerd, that's Madden the shit. sounds so kick ass. Yeah. It's like just all the crowd is like coming down at you and like the rain's coming down. It's really cool. But let, let's let's talk about this. I really want to talk about this. We've touched on it. Um, it's not just enough to have a 4K TV for this thing, right? You're like, oh, it's a 4K console, I'm gonna get a 4K TV, right? To really get the most out of it, there's a bunch of stuff. This is like back when like when people are saying, oh, it's an HD TV. It was mm-hmm. like, well, is it 720p? Is it 1080i? Is it rear projection? Is, is it, it is it EDTV? Is it whatever, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff uh, to consider. So with this, like I tweeted it out today, this morning, um, when I was doing some testing with uh, with a with another uh, person mm-hmm. who had an Xbox One X, um, we were looking at the compatibility screen. If you haven't seen that screen, it's kind of infamous. What it does is basically looks at it, the Xbox One X scans your TV and tells you what sorts of like features it supports, um, what your TV is able to support, and what what the Xbox One X can do. So HDR number one, HDR is not all the same. The, you, what you want is HDR ten. Not there's there's like another like I think it's Dolby HDR. Right. It does not support that. And as a matter of fact, that's the this that's the one that's least supported out there. Yeah. Um, it's similar for the Xbox One S, by the way. But then there's also new stuff like there's eight bit versus ten bit color. Uh, ten bit color looks more rich. There is smoother transitions between like color gradient. So if you're looking at a sunset, you wouldn't see like that banding. You'd see a nice smooth sort of like depth of color between uh, from one color to an- another. Also, for those at home listening and you're like, oh, shit, I better scribble this down. Drew, you put up a post about this, didn't you? Yeah, well, I, a post is coming. It is forthcoming. Well, we're, I'm writing a really, really, really in-depth article about all the different things that you need to look out for, especially so like if you're a person who's like, I'm going to get an X. I don't have a 4K TV yet. Like, I'm going to go get those things together. Go out there, do your homework, read my article. It will help you. You'll have an understanding of like, what do you need to get uh, in terms of like, it, the nice thing about this is right now is these days most of the new TVs, the new 4K TVs out there, do support this stuff. Um, but you really want to sort of like, you know, you really want to pour over the details. You don't just go out there and buy the cheapest 4K yeah. TV. You don't can go get. buy like an old insignia yeah. 4K TV from like even a year ago. <laughs> or it will not work. Yeah. Forget about it. It will not work. Yeah, and then also you know, and and if if you really want to get again the most out of it in terms of sound, like don't just get any old like stereo receiver. Mm-hmm. Don't get like generic home theater unit that like uh you know the the big box store wants to throw at you as a pack in like really do your homework make sure it supports dolby atmos 7.1 like if you're a real theater head like this stuff's gonna blow you away i gotta tell you the best stuff i saw on the x was watching fucking planet earth <laughs> yeah. in 4k <laughs> Of I course really, it was. I really wish I was high out of my mind for that, but it was great. <laughs> I was. Yeah. Planet Earth came in the reviewer's kit, so props to Microsoft yeah, for that, because that is fucking hilarious, call. and it is very, very good. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> looking at the tiny little grains of, like, moss on the sloth, Yeah, you know, it just, like, <laughs> blew me away. For me, like, the, the thing where HD always falls apart is when you get up and you walk towards the TV and mm-hmm. you stand, like, three feet away. Not with this. Not with Planet Earth. No. It is so crystal clear. Not like 4K. Like 4K, you can get right up to it. It's like looking through a window. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely keep an eye out. Cross your T's and dot your eyes, man. Like, it, you know, this thing comes out on uh, Tuesday, the 7th. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're not sure you're ready, do some homework. You know, definitely be prepared because it's, uh, it's it's not just, you don't just look for UHD on the box and think you're mm-hmm. good. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, there's a whole there's a whole system involved, yeah. but making it like and making the transition and making the switch from whatever Xbox you're using now to an Xbox One uh, X is extremely easy. It oh. takes a while because of the downloads and yeah. how fast your internet speed is and how your transfers will go, but it's very very easy. Well, thankfully everything like Microsoft has been doing this for a while now. All your saves are in the cloud. Yeah, and and like easy in yeah. the cloud. It like that's where they've always outpaced PlayStation. Yeah, you know like. Getting things between Xboxes and yep. shit like that is super easy. Just I just throw on my home network and boom, away you go and I yeah. can play games. Not only that, but if you have an external hard drive and that's where all your games are backed up, you just unplug it uh, and plug it in and you're good to go. You, you pretty much have to have an external hard drive with the Xbox One X. Right. Yeah. Uh, you Like, you need a two terabyte at least. Like, yeah. it's going to be... Yeah, they, we've already so seen bad. that, like, with Quantum Break. I, I linked you guys the article cool yesterday. That game's almost 200 gigs now if you download the, the TV oh. episodes. Yeah. You said the word of the day. If you're listening right now and you make a donation, we'll give you a copy of Quantum Break. Oh. But, but we're not writing donations till the podcast is over, Brock. 
Well, you can donate on Extra Life. We have a page. What, yeah. what's Tell them where again? to go, Ryan. Moose.com slash Extra Life. Yeah. Perfect. Make a donation right now. We'll give you a copy of Quantum Break. Yeah. Nice. But how are we going to contact them? On Twitter. Just yeah. write us. Yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 we have the internet, Ryan. There, there's ways to get a hold of us. I'm just thinking about logistics here. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, uh, back, yes. to, back so to Quantum Break. 100%. We're giving away a free copy of Quantum Break. We got a bunch of games to give away. A bunch of other shit to give away. Yeah. Which again, if you're so. listening to this podcast later... You done goofed. You yeah. missed out. Yeah. Sorry you missed on some free prizes, but we'll have free prizes uh, on another podcast, another live stream. So all the more reason to watch our shit and, you know, yeah. go to our website and stuff. Exactly. Um, and one last thing I wanted to say. Uh, on, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So definitely these games are bigger. You have to download updates. Uh, you can't like, like right uh, out of the box. Uh, um the like Gears of War isn't ready to go. You got to download an update for it. I think Gears is like what 103 gigs mm-hmm. yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a fucking update. Most games are about 100 gigs. Yeah. So yeah. be prepared because yeah. 4K assets are big. Yeah. So you're gonna have to go buy that shit. Yeah. Yeah. It just means you'll have to be sort of uh, more cognizant about deleting stuff from your hard drive. I guess. That yeah. Thing. You can't be like me with my PS4 where I have like 60 games installed. Yeah. Uh, time. Also, make sure you're downloading the 4K assets for your game. And you can do that beforehand. Oh. Don't just pop it into your Xbox One X because it won't have the 4K assets. You it's, need to download them. You got to download them, yeah. Uh, there's a friend of the show who did not know that and was wondering why the quality wouldn't go up. Uh, was that Mr. We, does his uh, last name start with a C? Uh, maybe. Oh, maybe. boy. Just, you got you to gotta remember that it, they don't make, it's like not totally obvious, so just go into your settings, download them. Even yeah. if you're just thinking about getting an Xbox One X, you might as well download the 4K assets now because it's going to take a while. Or like They're big. You, one of the things, too, is like if you plug it into a 1080p TV and then get a 4K TV later, uh, it will eventually prompt you to say, oh, hey, it looks like you got a 4K TV. Do you want to switch to 4K mode? But it doesn't mm-hmm. like... It doesn't automatically do it. Like, mm-hmm. like go into your settings, make sure everything's tweaked. Yeah. Go through the calibration mode. That's key. Yes. Like, there's the whole cal- calibration yes. thing in the Xbox settings. Get the most out of your TV. Make sure it's dialed in. The brightness is dialed in for your room, for your environment. Yeah. Get a bias light. Do what, all that shit. What's that? Go turn off, full home theater on this motherfucker. Turn off that absolutely shitty fucking TV mode they have on every TV, oh, too, yeah, that no, needs no, no, to no. go away. No it needs TV to be mode. banned. Yeah. Yeah, if you're watching like live hockey, maybe, but forget forget it for anything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just told I have nice feet, so that's nice. Thank Aww. you, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, sorry that happened. The stream broke. Brock kicked the modem. He didn't actually kick the modem. It was no, we just... quantum broke the stream. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it gave us time to actually unbox uh, some. Uh, we opened up a Legos. Lego. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I had twenty possibilities in that blind bag, and I got the one the one character I already owned. Of course. It's a good character, though. Yeah. So uh, we're just going to give it a couple seconds here before we just dive into our next topic to make sure people can come back. Um, Yeah. I mean, sorry about that. It took like 10 minutes to reboot the internet. (sighs) We're feeling good. Yeah. Rocking our rubbing feet together. Woohoo! Wee toesies. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Are we we live streaming on Pornhub yet? Just no. (laughs) Why? Why not? We got to hit all the bases. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, although you pointed out something interesting, Drew, the, for all the years we've done the podcast, this is the first time we've had a Tim Hortons cup in this shot. Yeah, being a Canadian be, podcast, being as Canadian because I usually <laughs> drink uh, Starbucks when I drink coffee on the show. Right. Exactly. Neither of these companies sponsor us in any way. It's just coffee that we drink. Game Moose is not affiliated with Tim Hortons or Chipotle, or or DK Books. No. No. Or Starbucks. But or, again, or Starbucks. I'd really like to be affiliated with DK Books because of all those things, I actually that's a product I really like. Yeah. Starbucks is drinkable. Tim Hortons is barely drinkable. It's not drinkable. It's not my favorite coffee. Yeah. All right. My favorite coffee. Emphasis on this is my personal opinion. So we waited long enough. Thanks we for kept clarifying. these folks I don't waiting. Get sued. <laughs> <laughs> it's time, guys. Topic two. Topic two. We conclude our Xbox thing. Again, I'll, I'll, like just to round it up for those who missed it, because I think the stream is going bad real quick. So, again, your recommendation is just for people to wait until, unless, if, if they're a new Xbox owner, should they buy an X? Do you think? I, I would invest in, yeah, because that's going to be like your future console for yeah, the next, yeah. like, I would not buy the original Xbox. Yeah. Uh, if you're a casual gamer, probably an S. If you're like an actual hardcore gamer and you play a lot, yeah, get the X. Right. And that's, that's sort of how I feel about the PS4 Pro as a PS4 Pro owner is I think if you don't have a PS4, mm-hmm. get the Pro. And if you do have a PS4, just, just keep your PS4. 
So. I want to upgrade because mine's lagging now. Yeah. I need is to... it making is it making the jet engine noises? No, yet? it's just lag. It's getting slower. Oh. It's, it's it's churning down a bit. Yeah. It's not running like it did on day it, one. Is it? Yeah. So you have a day one one as well. Uh yeah. 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 That's what I had before the the pro, and I was ha- so happy I actually got one because. Yeah, my my uh, regular launch one was also having some. Oh, issues. I just want to say one more thing about the X. Sure. I really wish it had a nicer design. It is very plain Jane. Like it is, it's just a black box. But like, knowing Microsoft, there's going to be a bajillion different mo- variations of that. Though. Sure, but I I feel like any I, I compared it to like this like like a gaming computer or something. Like they could have added like some cool lights or like. Just a little detailing Ooh, or something. Yeah, get some fucking LED on like, that. Like, just something. A little, like, obviously it would have, like, offset some prices, like, but it just would have looked that much better. Any That's console right. that supports RGB LED with, like, selectable colors, I'm buying that. Like, I'm not only am I buying three of those tomorrow, I'm telling all my friends that they have to buy it because it's all about RGB, bro. Can you imagine doing it with, with your controller, too? But then again, that would affect branding, and I know that would make them sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also, they're doing the Xbox ID like controller program, so yeah. give me some RGB. Well, LED. Best Buy is doing decals if you buy uh, the Xbox One X from there on Tuesday. They have a Cuphead decal I really want. It looks sexy Wait, AF. Hold on, hold the phone. Brock, you like Cuphead? Uh, I, I, he's okay. By the way, I played some Cuphead for the first time uh, this week. Oh, yeah? Wow. On the X. Wow. Good game. Great game. Hard as fuck. Hard, it's, hard, hard. It's okay. I hate that carrot. <laughs> No, the carrot's well, not even that hard, though. Yeah, no, the carrot's the easiest one of the bunch. I was gonna say you're not even you're well, not even. I, I played it though. for about fifteen minutes. Okay. so give, give me a fucking break here. I beat yeah. him on my first try. Yeah. Okay, Braggy <laughs> over there. <laughs> Suck a dick. Yeah. Suck a dick, <laughs> motherfucker. That's that's kind of how we do here on Game Blues. All right. Yeah. Topic two this Deuce. week. We're gonna talk about the Paris Games Week press conference. Yeah. Sony. Sony had a sort of promise, like almost like the E3 was half the story. So we're going to do like a big press conference and they announced a lot of stuff, but a lot of stuff we just didn't get a ton of updates on, Mm. which is too bad. I mean, those uh, fire trucks are very exciting outside, too, but Mm -hmm. it's fine. So let's go through the announcements they had. Um, Uh, I'm going to sort of hit like the big announcements. You watched it live with me. Well, essentially, like we watched it live. We were chatting back and forth with one one another. Brock, did you watch it live? I watched it live. It was really boring. It wasn't very exciting. That presentation sucked dick. Yeah, it was very I cool. hated all of those people. It was very salesy. Not, yeah. and I didn't, did, are you referring to just the pre-show, though, or the actual Oh, the conference? pre-show was incredibly boring, but then the actual conference wasn't that exciting either. It was yeah. very salesy. It was like, here's our game. Here we are. All right, here we go. A panel of four people with very low charisma. Um, yeah. Are you saying Sid Schumann does not have incredible charisma? No, that, he doesn't. That Which, man could sell you a car mm, or two. That's the problem. Yeah. That was the problem. Yeah. Like I wasn't feeling their performance, and it felt very uh, fake. But did did you not <laughs> see the Microsoft one? Like the Microsoft uh, Gamescom one was just as bad. Uh, yeah, well, I'm sure. Um, it, it, all those ones that they kind of do that are like treehousey, like mm, where yeah. people are sitting down at like a desk or something. Like it's a sports commentary. Yeah, I, I just don't think it translates very well. It's no, a little, yeah. like, awkward, get up there, and have a presentation. Because when we were going to talk about BlizzCon in a bit, they had a pre-show as well, and it was. It, I also felt the same way about it. And Whereas, I don't think any of those four have show like they don't ever work together. So there's no like chemistry between. No, them. no, no exactly. that's that's the big thing. No, right? and like, they weren't playing off each other, and they weren't really talking to each other. They were just reading their lines and then moving on to the next. Because Sid actually uh, hosts the the PlayStation Blogcast, which right. is actually a good podcast. Mm-hmm. And, and like I almost wish they had Ryan Kalentz up there, who was also a really right. good. Like him, him and Sid have good chemistry, mm-hmm. so it, it would have been more fun to watch. And they could have bantered, yeah. yeah. But it, there was no banter. There was just problem, the like, there's, so, there's so many great personalities in the business, but none of them that are tied to like a piece of hardware in like a, an official capacity. That's where it gets a little weird because it's it is a hardware manufacturer doing, yeah. It. And that's why yeah. they have to sort of script it that way. And they have to find people that. That are like only yeah. talk about PlayStation. Yeah. Like that's their thing. And that's kind of a weird niche to be in. Like you'd wish it could be someone like the kind of funny crew or like the giant bomb people mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. some of the, the game moose people. R- oh, game moose, great. Yeah. 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 Uh, so the, the, like, like <laughs> if it was like Griffin and fucking Justin and Pat from like Polygon, I'd be like laughing, or in Simone, I'd be laughing my ass off. That would be great. But, you know, obviously those people work for actual, like, journalistic publications mm-hmm. and can't do that shit. Are you so. saying they're real people and, and, you know, other people are not? Well, they have, a, they're, they're sort of like a genuine, uh, like, sincere nature to them that, 
like these people, like you said, that make it feel salesy mm-hmm. instead. Also, you, know, like you could that. have seen a game but like, wow, that looks like absolute shit because yeah. I'm a journalist and yeah. that's what I can say, like, you know. Yeah, that's true. But, like, if I'm a personality, then, like, only repping and, like, I only talk good things about it, like, yeah. But that it makes you sound phony fucking yeah. phony. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, and again, it, this was more a traditional Sony press conference, unlike yeah. E3, which is very much not that at all. It's like, hey, let's watch a bunch of game trailers and call it a day mm-hmm. with, like, Sean Layton barely talked during that. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this, it was very chatty, which is like usually what we don't want to see from Sony or, or Microsoft as well. Again, like again, they're put in a tough position and I understand that they have to try and sell. I like when it. Phil Spencer talks. But he's a good speaker. That's true. But yeah, like when you go outside that. He's got energy and he's young. It's nice. Yeah. Anyways, let's talk about all these announcements. So we're going to start off with Ghost of Tsushima, which is Sucker Punch's new game. We saw a trailer for it. It kind of looked like Onimusha or Neo. And I was like, huh, is this like Neo 2 or is it a Return of Onimusha? No, nope. it's Sucker Punch's new game. So they go from Sly Cooper, which is like a raccoon that steals things, to Infamous, which is a superhero game, yep. to this. So yeah, like, this is way, this is not what I was expecting at all. No, and then they post, the weirdest thing is they posted a photo behind the scene of all the developers and stuff. And there's like no Japanese people in the picture. Like, it seems like, to get that history, like they need some. I hope they like talk to historians and they talk to a lot of people. I, from about what I this. hear from interviews, it sounds like that it, the game is pretty well researched. Okay. In the, in the same way Assassin's Creed is. I mean, yeah, like how many Egyptian ancient, how many ancient Egyptian people worked on Assassin's Creed? Because the reality is that the present but, Egyptian people. But Ubisoft has a pretty mixed bag of people that work there. That, like, that's always their thing. As a matter of yeah. fact, there's a whole splash screen at the beginning of the game saying it's made <laughs> it's by true. like a multicultural group of people. Yeah. Um, from varying backgrounds, so. They just want you to know that as well. On yes. the other hand, the game looks really fucking good. Yeah, it looks and really cool. I, I did not expect that from yeah. Sucker Punch, like yeah. one bit. And it's an open world game, just like all their other games as well, like yeah. Infamous as well. But it doesn't, from what they talked about at in interviews after, is that it doesn't sound like there's any fantasy elements or super elements. It just is a historical game where you, you have a dual life between being a samurai and being a ninja. All that sounds really cool. I feel like there'll it's, be some like mystical magic shit though, like with dragons. I'm and sure stuff. there will be something because it is Sucker Punch, and that's what they do. Yeah, but also like this kind of seems a little bit like like medieval Japan Red Dead. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. like that's I'm really into cool. it. I am into it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm excited to see what happens. What happens next with it? Again, we only saw like a brief sort of mm. cinematic trailer, um, but we will sort of find out more about it later. Again, we there's no release date because. I still think this is probably a 2019. Yeah, game. yeah, yeah. But yeah. at least it's cool that we sort of know that there is stuff on the horizon mm-hmm. for 2019. And people there, have been hounding them for a long time to show like what they're working on. Yeah, because yeah. again, it sounds like that and La- Last of Us Two and Death Stranding in 2019. Like that's uh, they're already starting to build mm. that 2019 like mm. like lineup essentially. Which yeah. Is cool. Uh, next up, we start. We heard about Guacamole Two. Yeah. was announced from our friends at Drinkbox here in Toronto. Yeah. Of course, we got to give them a shout out because local studios are amazing. You should support them. Also, but, it's a Metroid fucking Vania and a really good one. Yeah, Guacamelee is an amazing game. As a matter of fact, I'm inclined to say that Guacamelee is probably one of the better Metroid games that's come out in the last 10 years. Yeah, because <laughs> again, it, it it's sort of picking up where Castlevania, just there are no more 2D Castlevania games and the, yeah. Guacamelee fills the void. It's, it's, it, it felt like the, the next logical step in terms of like, Symphony of the Night. It's very Symphony of the Night, and like, because you've got like your your transformations and you know, um, and and how those sort of things work. Yeah, so. I liked the the how they incorporated switching between the the the, the dead world and the the living world into puzzles. Like yeah. it was really cool how you had to switch between them. Yeah, the and this is, they're doing really neat stuff with this in the sequel, where like they showed a thing where it was like the dead world and the living world, except it was like bands like going down, yeah. per, like, moving at all the time. So you had to, like, move around the screen to get to certain areas based on where, like, the things were moving. At the, it looked fucking crazy and awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm really excited. It also is coming soonish, in yeah. quotations, which, I, again, from, from Drinkbox, whenever they say that, because they said something similar uh, when Severed was announced, like, I, I think that that game's probably, like, early 2018, Yeah, if I had to guess. Yeah, it's, which, I mean, but also it's hard for a small independent studio like that, you know? Like, if they hit a roadblock, that means that, like it takes them that much longer to, they can't just find more staff to work on it necessarily. Right. You know? Yeah. Sony must be pretty fucking proud of it though. Cause it led the show. Yeah. Like that led the pre-show, yeah. which is pretty huge. Well, yeah. I think it was a game that like, 
I think I think it like led in sales on the Vita or something crazy like that. It's, it it's like, one of the top selling games on Vita. I, th- I think it's one of the biggest like cross buy games that's ever come out, which wow. is crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, and for good reason. It's it's fantastic. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And and it's on every platform as well. Ex- I don't know if the Switch version is out yet. It's not out yet. Yeah. No. I know. I, I looked. I'm pretty I, sure. I don't think I've ever played it. So I went to buy is, it on Switch. Yeah, because Severed's out on, on Switch. Yeah. Why do I not? have it to keep rebuying stuff on my Switch? This is... I'm like I hear this and because I'm like I have to. It. I just bought yeah. Thimbleweed Park for the third time. I, mean, I want to replay. It. Doom's coming out next week, and I'm probably going to rebuy it. Oh, so. we can talk about Doom because I played it yesterday. Oh yeah, I saw oh, the, the Switch version of Doom. Yeah, I, I saw that. I wouldn't. Up. I I wouldn't uh, rush to buy it can if you, I were you. Can you? Can you say that? Yeah, I can say that. All right. I'm not under embargo. Oh, all right. It did not look good, man. It does not run very well. Oh, that's just um. Y- yeah, I would not. Uh, not not throw your shekels at it. Fair Rocket Le- Rocket League plays pretty fun. The okay. graphics are That's taking important. their graphics take a huge hit, yeah. but it is pretty fun on the Switch. And playing with other Switches is really fun. What, what but, matters with Rocket League um, is how fast does it run? It runs it runs fast enough that it, it yeah. it's good. I didn't find any lag or anything. Uh, Doom on the other hand and Skyrim, a uh, uh, little uh, ooh. No yeah. explain up. Uh, cool that it's coming to the Switch. I wouldn't spend money on it. So just wait for reviews. Yeah. That's what you'd say. Okay. It, it's right. ugly. Mm-hmm. It they draw it's it drop quality. Yeah, uh, that's disappointing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the next thing we we saw was uh, oh Spelunky Two. Spelunky Two was announced. That is the the sequel to the roguelike game Spelunky, where you, where you dive in caves and it's great. I don't have much to say about because I didn't play Spelunky. Uh, I didn't either, but I mean it sounds exciting. People like Spelunky. I that's tried good. to play it on my Xbox. I could not get into game, it. Yeah. Not for me. I know that uh, uh, IGN's Andrew Goldfarb is like the biggest Spelunky fan I've ever seen, and I know he's very, very happy. That, yeah, like, like Patrick Klepek is a huge uh, Spelunky fan too. I just like saying Spelunky. I yeah. like saying it too. Also, uh, like, because you're it means cave diving, like like cave climbing. Oh, because you're spel- that's, that's what well, spelunking is. Oh. Is where you descend into a cave. I, when I, I, I go to bars, I uh, when I talk to. Uh, when I talk to pretty people, I uh, say, "Do you want to go back to my house and spelunky yeah. with me?" Yeah. Does do you, that work? Do you say you're an ass spelunker? Um. Yes. Yes, yeah. I do. Yes. You want to descend into their cave? Yes. Yeah. That works for me too. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. 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 Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. Hot dating tips. Well, that's that, what we had to say about spelunky, folks. All right. Uh, it's it's got a weird mechanic though, where like apparently you have kids. Uh, something, something, something. Well, I think I think you play as the son of the person, the dad, the the person from Spelunky. Well, the whole thing about like, so it's basically a, it's a You're, platformer roguelikey kind of thing. And I wonder if they're going to do a thing where like each run is like a kid or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It wouldn't be the first time that's happened. Like, what was it? Rogue Legacy did that. Yeah, right? Rogue Legacy. Maybe did they're that. born born some like Rogue Legacy shit. Yeah, we'll know. see. Yeah. All right. So we also uh, heard about Monster Hunter. Uh, they just had like a brief trailer. They also announced that Aloy is in the game. It looked pretty I am so pumped for that. Yeah. yeah. That Aloy thing came out of nowhere. Yeah. It makes perfect sense though. It does. does and she it fights looks, dinosaurs. And she's got a little weird robot thing with her. Yeah. That's not in Horizon. Or maybe it'll be in the sequel. Maybe. Or, ma- or, maybe, or maybe it, it takes Monster the Hunter place of your... Well, in Monster Hunter, you always have like an animal companion. Mm. And I think that's to replace that. That's just my theory, anyways. Um, we also but saw. Also, give me a sequel to Horizon. We saw a, a story trailer for Spider Man. Yes, which looks dope. Again, I don't think the character models look as good as like. What the fuck's up with Peter Parker's face? Yeah, uh, I do not yeah. like it. It looks like all I three Spider Mans stuck together. See, I've gone back and looked at it again. I think it was just in the context of we just saw Detroit and. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us, <laughs> like those, like character models look so much better. No, than everyone Spider-Man. else looks fine except Peter Parker looks fucking weird. You just don't like his hair, do you? I don't like anything about his face. Yeah, I don't. But you can like it. Clearly shows you can play as MJ in the trailer. They, yeah, Sweet. they did mention that. Miles is in the trailer. Wait, 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 wait. Like you can, MJ. Yeah, yeah you MJ. can play as Mary Jane. In that She's game. like it's like it looks like someone's using her to like cover they, and like hide. They specifically they mentioned they, you yeah. can, you play some missions as yeah. Mary Jane. Uh, the only thing that like I just don't get the enemy. Like it's such a weird enemy choice. You mean negative, mis- uh, Mr. Negative? Yeah, he's like, not even the main villain though. Mm, They've come out and said before uh, uh, after they, E3 that he's not the main villain. That's for the why they story. showed him so much in the trailer. Yeah, because they don't want to. They do not want to spoil who the main villain is. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, also, we saw Shocker in the trailer too. So Shocker is also yeah. confirmed. Yeah, but Shocker's just like an easy beatable. No, thug. but they hadn't they hadn't teased any other villains 
at all. Uh, they didn't announce anyone else yet, so it's it, it, they finally showed us. I'm somewhere. sure we'll see a lot of uh, Spider-Man Rogue Gallery. Yeah, I hope so. Because yeah, that'd be awesome if you fought like some bigger villains. I am so. very. It's, that game looks fluid as hell. Yeah. Like that game looks very very fun. Yeah. We still don't know when it's coming out. Again, they mm. said at E3, first half of 2018. Here they just said 2018 without attacking mm. on date because they didn't at E3 either. It's just. Sean Layton came out afterwards saying mm-hmm. 2018. I love the suit. I think the suit looks brilliant. The suit is it is really dope. cool yeah. reiteration of Spider-Man. With the, the big white spider, but yeah. the red suit, red and blue suit, I like it so much. I want a uh, story-driven Spider-Man that's not based on the movies or anything. Looks yep. re- and not yeah. even on the comics. Like This is a whole new original it's IP. It's just their own thing. Very cool. I mean, that's what they did with uh, fucking the Arkham games, and it yeah. was amazing. And it had the MCU Marvel like logo beforehand. Like yeah. This thing is like, I hope this opens up a ton of new Marvel games. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Too. I want a Thor and Hulk buddy. Well, game. we know that Avengers game co- is coming from Crystal Dynamics. That's true. So, yeah. but you might get that. I hope so. Yeah, I want it all. Uh, we also saw a new trailer for uh, Detroit Become Human as well. Just looks, setting up more of the story with Kara. That looked so fucking heavy. Oh, yeah. oh. What a, that is a weird trailer to play at your game show. But that also, was depressing. That was dark as fuck. Yeah. I mean, it goes along with the last thing we're going to talk about. But, like, yeah, there was some dark shit. That, that was man. really yeah. weird. The that, whole thing about, like, like uh, so you it, it, it part of the game, it seems to be you're playing... You're playing as robots in different situations, mm-hmm. right? It seems yeah. That's yeah there like, are three three different androids. Yeah. There's the mm-hmm. one we saw in the first trailer, who's like a police officer robot. Yeah. He's he was like he's like the the hostage negotiator. Yeah. That's the one guy. I played. I really like my time yeah. with it. And then there's the second robot who's like leading the android revolt. Yeah. Right. And then the third one is Kara, who we saw in this trailer. Yeah. Kara was actually shown back in 2011 as part well, of like, a, like tech a tech demo. demo yeah. Um, just to show off the engine for this game running on wow. PC, essentially. It, it was it was meant to be a um, a PlayStation like tech like yeah. Uh, thing. It was because we heard about this before PS4 was announced. I, I think oh, it was wow. meant to be like a benchmark thing for like it was like a target render for PS4 or something like that. Like it was right. like stuff that they're trying to achieve. Yeah. It was a cool thing for sure. Um, so it's like so, a, but the, so in this demo though, it's Kara, yeah, and it's sometimes so Kara is now working as a, um, uh, she's a like a childcare, like a, like a like yeah. a, a nanny android, and she's looking after a kid who has a horribly abusive father. Um, what are we saying here? Does he just hit her, or is is, is he sexually abusive? I don't. I don't. We know. just don't know. I, I, really, yeah. I don't even want to speculate that yeah, right isn't now. Isn't that fucking gross? Yeah. It is really. So it's pretty heavy. abundantly clear that this kid is like scared to death of her dad, and like they also mentioned too that Kara for was at the house before. Yeah. And for some reason, what needed to be sent for repairs, she got broke. Yeah, she got yeah. broke and yeah. needed to come back. Yeah. For some reason. Uh, so yeah, like it, it seems like you sort of like use clues to figure out what's going on, and it talks about like the, the emphasis seems to be on sort of like the branching paths, mm-hmm. like all the different choices you can make and what how those affect. Things. And they so showed like, how very different they were. Yeah. Too. So things like finding out, like how you find out about the abuse, like things like finding the gun, like you find a gun in the house beforehand, and you get caught finding the gun, or do you find the gun and manage to st- stash it somewhere? You know. When, do you like lock the door and try to protect the girl? Do you go? Do you put the girl outside of the window and try to protect her? Do you both go out of the window? How do you conf- uh, confront the uh, the dad? Like it was fucked. They also mm-hmm. showed what happens if you do nothing. Yes, yeah, and the girl dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucked up, Which man. Is crazy. Yeah, that 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 coaster does that. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I'm still really excited. They also tacked on spring 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. we we only knew 2018 after yeah. a trailer. Uh, I think at Gamescom they they showed that, but now we know early, spring 2018. So this game's coming soon. We're gonna have awesome. a busy 2018, Jets. Like early 2018 is yeah. looking stacked right now. Yep. Especially because Red Dead still spring 2018. Yep. And this game, Dragon Ball Z, God of War, yeah. Dragon Ball Z's in three months. Yeah. Yeah. Get out, motherfuckers. Oh, uh, I'm hyped, Ryan. I'm yeah. Brock hard over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, Boom. One thing that got me really excited, Shadow of the Colossus, coming out February 6th, oh. the, re- the remake of Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. Um, the, the, tri- this, the second, re- well, the last one was an HD, re- uh, like, like. It was just a, uh, yeah, it was the, just This is version. more of a remake. This is a full remake, because yeah. it, actually, the the not as good example was the what they showed during the conference, which was sort of the battle with the 13th Colossus, the flying dragon looking thing yeah um in the desert but what they showed they what they posted later was basically the full opening cinematic and they even had like a side by side of how how much that's changed and it looks like 
it looks stupidly beautiful. I, I heard I, it was one of the most popular demos at uh, Paris Games Week there. Yeah. I, it, it also, from what I heard, they didn't let you play with anything but the original control stream, mm. but they've already confirmed that there's a new modern control stream. It just wasn't in the demo that they had huh. there. I wonder um, why. I think, I don't know. I just, maybe it wasn't ready for prime time. I don't know. Do you think that's going to get delayed? Maybe a few weeks? They have already talked a date on it, though. I don't think it's going to get delayed, barring, mm -hmm. like, some kind of weird thing. I Plus, I think that's the perfect time to release that game. Because, like, again, the only things around it are Dragon Ball a week and a half before it. I thought there was something else big coming out the same week as Dragon Ball. Maybe, but I don't remember it off the top I think of there head. is. There is. I've already forgotten. We talked like about a, it last week. It, Monster Hunter? Uh, oh, maybe Monster Hunter? I don't know. Um, but then on the other side of things, you have, uh, Far Cry mm -hmm. and then, um, yeah, there was a game we talked about last week that's coming out on the 20th. So, um, honestly, I still think that February, either February or like the summer is when you want to play this game. Mm -hmm. is there, so I think that they're choosing a good window for it. And I'm really excited to play it. Cause again, we talked about it last week, but Shadow of the Colossus is my second favorite game of all time. I cannot wait to, to play this new version of it. And it looks amazing. Um, there also was also a lot of uh, little announcements, but we've been sort of been droning on about this for a while and we got more stuff to talk about. So uh, the one thing we do want to talk about, though, The Last of Us Part 2 had a trailer, guys. The Internet was not happy about this. I mean, for the most part, it was what you talked about with uh, Detroit, where it was very yeah. much a content thing. Like out of all the things you show at your press conference, why this one? Yeah. Um, but I understand sort of from my point of view, Watching the trailer, it was very much a tone piece setting, uh, like, and sort of just almost like what uh, Naughty Dog d did for Uncharted 4's trailers, which was very much like a short scene from the game, mm -hmm. sort of like to tee up events that'll happen. Well, they, they also said, like, th it's important that they, they wanted to say that the first game was about love, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, uh, in terms of, sort of like the familial love that developed between. Uh, Joel and uh, Ellie. and Ellie, yeah, or like even like even the the DLC, the the love she had for her friend, and so on. This game they said is very much about hate, yep. And you really get that picture, and that wasn't Ellie in the trailer. No, nope. we've been yes, we found that was out. not Ellie in the trailer. So there might be more perspective characters, which is cool. Yeah, that well, that fucking clip her wings scene thing. Oh my god, fucking oh shit. Yeah, that was so fucking nuts. Yeah. That was intense. That was a very yeah. intense moment. Yeah. We also, um, again, most people, including myself, think that the character we saw is Ellie's mom because they would, because then they, they, Naughty Dog later after the trailer was over, uh, named all the individual characters in the trailer except for, for the, that one character. That was the woman being hung? Yeah. The woman being hung. Okay. Who has a four letter name and Ellie's mom, I think is named Anna. It's like a four. Okay. It's a it's a four letter name as well. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. Yeah, because in the flashback, um, we never see what happens because it, it's just the dad, right? Yeah. The, oh no 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 no. no, we no don't it's Joel see, at the beginning. Of yeah, the game. we don't it's see. It's not Ellie. We don't know where Ellie's we, life starts. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think like almost like this is like exactly like that where I think almost this is going to be the start of the game. Yeah. Where instead of having Joel's flashback, you have Ellie's flashback. Right. That'd be cool. And then maybe, like, again, th putting into context what we saw before at PSX last year, like, her telling Joel that she's going to kill them all, maybe she finds out about this, like, because, again, it sounds like her mom was being sort of being chased by, like, a religious cult almost. Yeah. Like, what if Ellie finds out about this and she goes out for revenge for her mom? This, this is, like, a very Walking Dead-ish kind of thing, right? Like, just, like the real monsters are humanity and they're really neat leaning to that heart. I guess they did that in the first game with the cannibals. Yeah. Right. You really get a sense there of that, but like they're going back there in like a real intense way. Yeah. Like, holy fuck. Exactly. And uh, it sounds like Laura Bailey is back. Yeah. Being, being this unnamed character. Mm. Um, also, this unnamed character looks very much like Ashley Johnson who plays Ellie. So mm. I'm pretty sure that it's mm. probably just her mom. Okay. So, I'm excited. I'm excited for the last of us part two. Still have no idea I'm, what the hell that game I'm coming. hesitant still. Yeah. Because I don't want to get into like Walking Dead dramatic like category. I want this to be its own thing. Yeah. Naughty Dog's proven to me though that they they handled this type of subject matter right. And I don't think they're going to let us down. But you're right. I mean, especially because we are, like you talked about it before, we're zombied out as mm. well. Like, especially like post apocalyptic zombie esque games like this. And I thought yeah. Last of Us was good, but I never like, I have never put it in the like the amazing right. category. Mm -hmm. I loved it. It's yeah. probably one of my favorite games. Me too. I mean, it's one of my favorite games of last gen. 
Mm. For sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Let's just be personally though. Yeah. So. I mean, certainly, I mean, it has its flaws. It's not a perfect game, but I really, really loved it. Yeah. I, I almost like Uncharted more though. Like I'm more of an Uncharted fan than, than Last of Us fan. But I mean, Last of Us has only had one game sort of to, yeah. Yeah. under its belt to, to prove it to us. And it almost felt like after finishing The Last of Us that it'd be weird to have a sequel. <laughs> but I feel less weird. I don't know. I'm, I'm just still interested just to find out more at some point. So that's sort of what we heard from uh, Paris Games Week uh, with Sony. I'm still interested, though, with them showing up, us this much stuff, what we're going to see at PSX this year. Because PSX is in a month from today. Maybe some dates. Maybe we'll get maybe we'll get a date for even one <laughs> yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, also, we didn't mention God of War as well, which had like a, the tiniest of tiny teases. I'm that's, pretty sure that's got to be coming in March. Yeah, right? I still can't believe there's no date for that game. I thought that like when we talked about Paris Games League last week, I thought that was a shoe in to have a release. Date yeah, absolutely. This. It's got to be coming in the first three months of 2018. In, around in the, there, in the trailer, it said 2018. Yeah, uh, like early 2018. I so, thought that was an early contender. I still think that's probably a March game. That that's what I have my money on. Yeah, I, I I'm fairly certain it's a March game. Yeah, they just don't want to tell us yet. Because again, I think they got burned with uh, Horizon or even The Last Guardian, yeah. like announcing like release dates way too early. Mm-hmm. So I think that maybe at PSX, maybe we'll hear about it. And realistically, date. we don't need to know. Like we do not need to know an exact date. It yeah. doesn't change anything for us at home. It just makes us stop asking yeah actually. that's well, it though that's but it, then though. when it gets delayed we get disappointed and then you get angry fans on twitter yeah. and you have angry fans on the new neil gaff like it's just a lot of pressure the constant questions is actually probably the lesser of two evils when you think about yeah. it yeah because having a delay you're like delayed. oh i fucking you ruined my whole weekend i booked off my week of work for this like and yeah. shit like that it's like fucking throw your game it's like Who okay it's a coming week out off work to go play a video game uh i feel like a lot of people do yeah i feel like people do that for red dead yep yeah. like you got three weeks vacation lined up mm. hell yeah take it for a week i mean a video game. don't get me wrong i can understand that for something like world of warcraft oh see? see you can see it <laughs> yeah good point all right so speaking of world of warcraft segue yeah. uh blizzcon that happened is happening right now yeah it's still happening it's just we had the opening ceremonies yesterday and some cool stuff happened. i'm so happy the opening ceremonies was yesterday by the way so we could actually talk right about this as well um <laughs> so let's get into the different announcements that happened at blizzcon's opening ceremonies so first of all we heard some some new overwatch news uh first of all they're introducing a new map called blizzard land it's basically a blizzard theme park map with all the different sort of uh worlds that blizzard has so diablo and warcraft yeah and others it looks really cool but they only had like a brief trailer uh for it they also announced as part of that when that when that launches there's going to be new skins for all the heroes of different blizzard characters so for example uh widow maker has a nova skin like nova the uh, ghost from starcraft yep um you're also going to have uh, a version of roadhog that's the butcher from diablo that's awesome like they're they, they look really cool you should check them out on, on blizzard's website they also announced though a new hero called moira and she is a support healer and it, she's like probably the Overwatch new Overwatch edition that I've probably been the most excited about because she's basically like almost like Zenyatta is where Zenyatta is almost a healer slash DPS character. So I'm actually really excited to play as Moira because she's like she seems like the perfect balance between a healer and a, and a damage dealer. She does she have an Irish accent? Yes. Of course she does. She's very, very, very Irish. Ah. Um, she yeah she she uses like different like light and dark magic essentially. It, uh, d- does this does this make her similar to um, like what what? She's closest to Zenyatta, the android okay. that heals people. Okay. Yeah, because uh, Anna, I think is probably the one you're thinking of the sniper. Well, I, I was thinking more just Mercy because like Mercy is more straight up like heal support, right? She's straight up heal heal support, but she does she doesn't do well attacking. Okay. Whereas Moira is like. Almost like 50 50 between attacking and healing, which yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm excited to see that bounce. And Zenyatta, who's also a healer. Uh, I didn't even I didn't even know Zenyatta was a fucking healer. So this is this is yeah. a surprise to me. Again, he's all he's a, he's also very good at dealing damage. I thought well. he was like DPS support or something. He's like, again, he's like DPF? DPS. Oh, damage sorry. per not, second. Not, uh, <laughs> not to fucking oh. damage per second. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Defuse. Sorry, yeah. I zoned out there for a second. Overwatch. I'm like, wee. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I understand that that's where you would go, though. Mm -hmm. DPF. Mm -hmm. Well, some of those characters are very hot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is definitely Winston? Yeah, baby. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I'm all about monkeys. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Get all up in that gorilla butt. This all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I'm... I'm Wait. Okay, I have a question, because you know the lore of Overwatch way more than me. Has Moira been teased? Like, all the rest of the characters? No, she was the one character that, like... Wasn't so she really came out of nowhere. Well, apparently everyone hated the fucking ARG for. Uh, I think they learned their lesson from uh, Sombra. Sombra, mm -hmm. where like, it was like it went on and on and on for on. way too long. And I mean, Doomfist, they just had like yeah. they they had like a brief tease before yeah. it, but this time I think they just want, really wanted to be like a big surprise. Yeah. Do we know anything about this character? She's a member of Blackwatch, so she's one of the bad guys. Ah. Um, and then she had like a short intro video about how she was a scientist. That was sort of uh, doing e experiments, and she was part of Overwatch at one point, but she was doing like some illegal experiments that they weren't a big fan of. Is so Overwatch giving us a TV show yet, or what? No, if only. God, I want a Netflix series for Overwatch. Sure. Especially because I would watch and then play the hell out of that game. If did that you was see available. the new Overwatch short they debuted as well? No, the I one did about not. Reinhardt. No, it's like te it's ten minutes of awesome. Honestly, I didn't even know BlizzCon was on. Somehow it slipped right over my head. She yeah. looks really spooky. Oh, weird. Yeah, that's not what I'm I not a big fan in her character model. Yeah. yeah, I mean, again, I from like the gameplay for her is what I'm excited mm. about, and I'm and I'm excited to see what skins and stuff she has as mm. well because mm. that's a big part of Overwatch. Um, so next up, they also talked about Hearthstone. They basically announced that um, there's a gnomes and dungeon. Sorry, um, uh, what you call? I'm just trying to find it here. Cabalds and Catacombs expansion, which actually is kind of cool because it adds a new single player Dungeons and Dragons esque mode where you basically are like exploring dungeons in Hearthstone and playing with cards. And in fact, you don't have to own any cards mm. or anything like that. And it's free to anyone, period, because Hearthstone's a free to play game. And you usually had to pay for single player packs, like single player story packs. But this time around, they're doing a, a free pack, which is kind of cool, uh, sort of to reward people for. To celebrate like Hearthstone being around for a few years now, so it's kind of cool. Um, they also announced that Hanzo is coming to Heroes of the Storm, which is the Blizzard MOBA, which is kind of cool. But let's get to the biggest news. Oh Jesus! The biggest news, actually. Mm -hmm. Before that, I also should mention as well StarCraft Two going free to play as well, which is kind of cool. As wow. Well. Yep. Whoa. So basically, with the free to play version, you get access to all the multiplayer stuff for the most part that everyone else has. Plus, you get the full Wings of Liberty campaign, which is the original StarCraft II campaign. Yeah. Um, and then if you which want is free, great. And if you already own Wings of Liberty, but not any of the other expansions, you get Heart of the Swarm for free. Yeah. And and vice versa, it scales up, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, Blizzard really gives back to their community in, mm -hmm. like, a good way. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. unlike other, like, companies, and it's, like, usually free stuff. They're yeah. they're one of the best companies for that, yeah. I think. Like, they, they haven't really, really charged for Overwatch, like, for new characters or nope. anything. They're like, not going you can to. buy loot boxes, They already right? said they're not. Yeah, they, you can buy loot boxes, but it's only cosmetic items. Yeah. yeah. Which is exactly how I would want that. Yeah, game. for mm -hmm. sure. Because And you can, again, from playing enough Overwatch, yeah. as, as I have, like... You earn all, all the stuff in-game anyways, and what you don't earn from loot boxes, they give you in-game currency to buy that, all that right. stuff with. Like, they do a really good job with. Yeah, like, stuff. EA could study some Blizzard over here and, like, use yeah. that to their game. Well, that's so. why, like, when I see a game like Destiny 2, I, I'm like, why, you guys are part of the same company, why aren't you working together more mm -hmm. on things? Yeah. Because we're going to talk about World of Warcraft in a second, and that, World of Warcraft has done so many things that I, implemented so many Systems that I wish Destiny would, even like the loot box stuff you see in Destiny, or even uh, like buying the shaders and stuff. Like that's so, like WoW mm -hmm. handles stuff like that so much better than Destiny does. Well, mm -hmm. apparently one of the things that they did do when they were basically pivoting the game at last minute is they brought in like the Diablo three team came in to consult with them, right? To show them like how after like post launch how you can turn a game around, right? Which is how we went from. Destiny, vanilla Destiny to like through how to evolve through the expansions. Eventually, we got to the Taken King, which was yeah. a much better, it, it, you know, a, a better implementation of that game. Which uh, is awesome because, again, Diablo was such a like it was a train wreck at launch. But let's face it, with the real money auction house and with other other systems that people didn't like. like yeah. The way they've turned Diablo three around, it, it's it's kind of crazy to think about. But that game is dead. There's so much more yeah. that they could learn from. From just Blizzard, yeah, you know, uh, exactly. by they by they I mean Bungie, yeah, you know, so. exactly. All right, let's get into the World of Warcraft news, yes, please. really quickly, so Brock can sort of. I mean, we, we can stop. Even if you the even if you don't care about WoW, it's kind of exciting. There are some bunch of new shit. There's a ton yeah. of new stuff. So 
Um, and again, I, I actually plan on putting a big article this week about um, what we're going to talk about in a second. So Blizzard, first of all, has announced that there will be a new uh, system coming to World of Warcraft. Vanilla servers. You talked about it at the beginning of the show. Vanilla yeah. servers are back. You can play the vanilla version of World of Warcraft. It's called World of Warcraft Classic. This is what people, have, fans have wanted for a very long time. Uh, and famously, like, hack servers have been shut down many, 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 many times. And now you understand why, because they're doing their own... They've been working on this for a while. And I think they're going to do it the right way. Yeah, I imagine it's hard to do it the right way, which is the why the reason why it took so long. Yeah, because I think because so. they have to have dedicated servers devoted to this. They somehow have to shard, like, the, um, the launcher, like, the World of Warcraft sort of UI to, to be completely different. Yeah. So, I don't think it's as easy as just flipping a switch and yeah. then and calling it a day. It's definitely not. And and I, I think that it sounds like all the up-res graphics, because WoW is a, a 20, 2004 game. Yeah. And it's had many, many, many graphical... Um, o- overhauls. Overhauls over yeah. the years. I think that that's going to carry over to the classic edition, which is the yeah. other reason I'm doing this. Because a lot of the private server stuff, it was just, you were running the original version of World of Warcraft from 2004... And it looked fun. It looked really bad. Yeah. So like, cause again, it, it, the game looks night and day different now when, when you look at them side by side. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited about that. We don't have a date for it. Blizzard just pulled the usual blizzard thing. It'll be ready when it's ready. Yeah. Yeah. But the biggest thing that they announced at this, the new world of Warcraft expansion battle for Azeroth, where basically this expansion, unlike other expansions is going to soul is going to focus on the Alliance versus the Horde. And in fact, if you go to the the page for it on Blizzard's website, it it has like the you you've seen the box art for Warcraft One, yeah. How it has like the orc the orc and then the human on on that side. They have that on the 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 Blizzard website for Battle for Azeroth because it's yeah. very much like that the focus on the Horde versus the Alliance because essentially in the trailer they show that Darnassus, which is the one Alliance city on Kalimdor, mm. is burned down and taken over by the Horde, and likewise um, the humans finally liberate Lordaeron, yeah. which is the, the undead city. So essentially, when you get to max level, you're going to have a new new alliance in Horde cities, essentially. Yeah. You have the Undercity is now going to be a human city. Which is weird. Which is weird. Super weird. Because yeah. that, that's been a Horde city for, like, over 10 years. Yeah, like, even, well, even going back to Warcraft 3. Because that was when, it, like, mm. the Frozen Throne is when they took that mm. over, when the undead took that over. Uh, even before Frozen Throne. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, like, yeah. that's that's exciting. Um, they also announced as well that there are some big changes coming to PvP and how all that works. Um, but, again, I won't go into big details about that because I'm going to write an article about it that we'll sort of talk about. All the changes coming to World of Warcraft, including six new alliance uh, allied races, which are essentially sub-races of like, the original races. Uh, yeah, the existing races. So, you're like... Yeah, for example, like the Void Elves are like a sub race of the Night Elves. Yeah. Or likewise, the High Mo- Mountain Torin, which are which we saw in Legion, are yeah the the other le- the other Torin, or vice versa, like Dark Iron Dwarves. Dark Iron Dwarves, yeah. We finally be Dark Iron Dwarves in this game, which yep. is kind of cool. And they said these are just the ones at launch. They'll be adding more as like free updates later. Yeah. Essentially, so um, Battle, Battle for Azeroth. They had an they showed off the 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 cinematic trailer for it as well, and it looks fucking amazing. Yeah. So I cannot wait for it as a big World of Warcraft fan. All right, so <laughs> let's move on to things that. Uh, you can tune back in now. Yeah, you can you can we're you can come back, bro. Oh, cool. We're, we're done talking Brock. about World of Warcraft, but we're going to talk about your other favorite subject, PUBG. PUBG. Oh, PUBG. Close. So PUBG got a release date for Xbox One. Yeah. It is coming to Xbox One early access on December twelfth, which is really awesome. It's it's thirty bucks, which is the same same price it is on PC. That's a good price. In fact, it's thirty dollars Canadian. 30 bones Canadian, nice. Yeah, that's a really good deal. It's $30 American yeah. or $30 Canadian. That's good. I like it when they do that. Thank yeah. you. Me too. Thank God. Um, also, the game itself, the PC version, is now is coming out of early access the same day. Hmm. So it's actually going to be a full release of the PC version on December 12th as well. Cool. So that's kind of cool that it's, it's actually... It, it's a big boy game now. It's a real game. Yeah. I mean, people can stop having that stupid debate about it being... Can, oh, can it be nominated for Game of the Year? Because it's not really a game. Well, motherfuckers, it's going to be a game before the end of the year. Yeah. Are you guys going to play it? I'm excited for oh, it. Oh, no, I'm totally going to play it. Yeah. People play- fucking love this game. It's like like a wide sort of like cross-section of people love this like game. Like 10 million people at one time kind of love this game. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people playing but, this game. But well, again, like some of my favorite game journals play this game. Like, like Giant Bomb plays it all the time. 
Like watching Abby Russell play PUBG makes me laugh every single time. Watching like again like Griffin and Russ and Pat and Justin play it over on Polygon. Um, it I'm, just looks like a lot of fun. I'm glad we don't have to pick a system. We can all just play it on Xbox. Yeah, yeah. and we can just goof. Yep. Have, have some solid goofs. Yeah, because especially after playing Fortnite Battle Royale, which I also really like as well. Like I'm I'm all in for PUBG. I'm excited yeah. to play yeah. it. Do you have Fortnite? Maybe we'll play Fortnite on the stream today. I only have I have Fortnite the the free to play version, mm. which is the battle royale version, which Fortnite. we can play because I yeah. still never played it. Yeah, we'll you still play. never played? We should no. do that right after this. We'll play a little bit of it. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that after the podcast. Yeah, it's Fortnite right. time. Yep. And last but not least, before we move into our, our you ask for it, you get it. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's unusual. What else can I ask for? Why? Why? Why you gotta do I this? Agree, <laughs> We're streaming live on Pornhub. Like All right, this. okay, cool. We're cool. gonna make it happen. Jesus it's fucking okay, Christ! Cool. All right, Maybe, last bit of news. Take off my socks before we jump into new releases. Uh, Housemark, um, the head of Housemark, uh, which is the studio that does did did Nation, Resogun, um, a lot of arcade shooters, Next Machina. Uh, Matterfall, which I know you didn't like. Nope. But one bit. All, I didn't either in the end. They had some really good ga- games, though. They announced this week that they are no longer working on arcade games because that's been their forte for, for years and years and years. But apparently arcade games do not make money. You're kidding. No, <laughs> surprisingly. So they're they are moving to games as service. Ah. Uh, yeah. Mm. I mean, they, they're, they're, they've always been a consistently good developer. Did you, either of you play um, Outland? On 360 or PS3, it was like a, a like a red and blue game where you essentially it's almost like a Metroidvania yeah. to 2D game. I don't think so. Yeah, I did. Uh, it was like an open world adventure game. Like, yeah, it was really good as well. Like that's sort of yeah. them going outside the arcade genre. So I'm excited to see what they do next because I think they're a really good developer. I just don't think that they make games that you particularly like, Brock, or even uh, like something like Matterfall was sort of a, a miss. Yeah, but I, I, they've always been a really great developer. So, teacher, really I'm very see. picky. We have to remember that's true. I have a very strange choice of you games. You do have a I finite like. in palette. You are playing Bubsy right now. So, no, I'm not playing Bubsy right now. I haven't played it yet. Yeah. Though I do hear it's one whole hour. It took uh, CGM to beat it for review. I've been yeah. I've been reading yes. on some sites. It's been three to four hours. Brandon, tell you that yeah. One hour it took the reviewer to beat it. That's because oh. it's 14 levels. Yeah. God <laughs> damn. <laughs> one. One whole hour. It has three bosses. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's a $40 game, too. <laughs> so uh, it'll, it'll be marked yeah, down 39, real soon. Yeah, 39. I remember when I saw. Yeah. I was like, that's offensive. It'll be marked down real soon. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm still just really sad about how it's marked. But let's move on. Let's talk about this week's new releases. Folks, there's a lot of them. Oh, wait. No, wait. I got to. Sorry. Um, you got something? I got something. I got something. <gasps> a studio shut down. Um,. And it was a real fucking bummer. And I've already oh, is it the Torchlight Studio? Uh, yes, the, tor- the the guys who are doing who did Torchlight One and Two and Gigantic. I think it's Runic Games, right? Runic Games. Mm. Uh, they shut down yesterday. Gigantic was kind of cool. They announced that they were closing yesterday. Yeah, Torchlight also a really fantastic mm. game as well. I, I'm, I, I think the problem with Gigantic, Gigantic was a cool game, but it just took forever to go from, like from the beta and whatever. And not mm. a lot of people were talking about it when it right. was in that beta no. form. It, like, didn't just it just didn't pick up the buzz they needed. No. Yeah, you know, and it was an X. I think it was free on Xbox, right? They had it for games with gold for one month, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. A few months back. Yeah, I remember like getting accepted into the beta and shit like that. But it was mm-hmm. just like one of those things where, like, when you're an indie studio like this, doing a project like this can make or break you. Yeah. If it if it doesn't hit just in the right way, and I don't think anyone was saying necessarily that. Gigantic wasn't a bad game; it just wasn't an amazing game, mm-hmm. and it needed to be a total fucking home run for them and sadly mm-hmm. it wasn't yeah i remember watching the trailer for it and going yeah this looks great mm-hmm. but then watching people playing going like eh. the success of PUBG is a like an outlier there's so yeah. many other studios that try and yeah. fail like quickly big studios too look at lawbreakers yeah, yeah. that did horribly it yeah. had, hey there's 10 people that play that game no. <laughs> for, for every for every PUBG or dota or uh fortnite fortnite well, well not even fortnite like fortnite's not even there yet um, oh, it's there. It still you know, has a huge player base they, for what it is. They, yeah. They've already had a m- million concurrents for that game. But also, it came out of a giant studio, right? Like, it's That's not true. really an indie game. Right. You know, like, we're, we're, for those, like, everyone thinks that, like, oh, well, all you got to do is make a good game and, and that's it. But, like, the reality is that those, like, indie games that are complete, again, that are complete home runs, they're one in a million. Mm-hmm. You know, for for every one of those games, there's a hundred games that fail mm-hmm. and fail hard, and entire companies get shut down because of them. Like, mm-hmm. there there are companies that are closing that you've never even heard of. You know, it is a real 
is a huge risk to to, to make and produce and, and publish an indie game. Mm. So like, you know, I totally like my heart goes out to people like uh, like Cappy and Drinkbox and all those other and Clay and all those other tiny little studios that are taking those risks. Yeah, and then and then when people like Runic, like w- when you even push it, when you try to make like a big like multiplayer game like that, that's really that's hard, man. That costs a lot of money. So yeah, you know, uh, I I hope that all the people that that w- were involved with Runic and landed their feet. And, you know, hopefully, like, everything will be okay for them. We're again. definitely hearing a lot more about studios closing than studios opening. Right. Yeah, well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's just kind of, you know, well, I mean, we're in a weird spot with the business. It's maturing in an interesting way, right? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely evolving, for sure. Yeah. And who knows, in mm-hmm. four or five years from now, it might do something completely different as well. L- look at other big, uh, big entertainment businesses. Like, look at Hollywood, where it's at right now. Yeah, like, independent studios aren't huge, right? It's all about the big tentpole, triple-A movies and shared and universes. Shared and, shared universes. And, and even that's, that's yeah. risky, right? Yeah. You know, like... DC? And, DC's learning the hard way. You know, and remakes and shit like that. Like, that's why yeah. we're getting... Like, same thing on our end. We're getting, eight, like, you know, the, the, the HD remakes and shit all over the place. And right. Small studios. Which I'm okay with. I like HD remakes of games. Yeah. I think they're great. Just not... Uh, opposed like, to a remake of a movie. Right. Like, I like HD remakes of games and so much as that I... I I like them, but that's not all I want. No. Like, if, like, the best games on your system are remakes of games from a previous generation, like, fuck it. Uh, that's a good way to make me not interested. Yeah. But that, that feels like that's happening for some... Mm-hmm. some that is the majority of my Xbox, like, library. Or like, There's let's, a lot let's, of remakes. Let's talk about, like, Capcom mm-hmm. and how that's all they've had their focus on for a while. Yeah. Hey, that you Resident know? Evil 2 uh, full remake is coming at some point. Why? We still haven't heard about that, like anything else about that in a while. I just hey, we that. saw that weird trailer for Resident Evil. Oh, yeah. That I mean, was fucking weird. Well, that's the DLC. They, they the announced DLC. that a while ago. Yeah, where you play as uh, Chris, quote unquote, Mr. Muscles. Yeah. Like, is it actually Chris? It is actually Chris. Is it actually, actually Chris? Chris? Well, who knows? Yeah. Could be a clone of Chris. Yeah, it could be. No, knowing what it that could... Umbrella Corporation gets up to. Yeah, yeah, there's something weird about that, Chris. Right. Yeah, that we was sh- a weird. Which can tell definitely not his the same voice actor. No, it's definitely not the same voice actor. Yeah. Though the the voice actor from five was shit, so mm. I don't blame them. We just didn't just talk about the VR stuff in general, which was that was just part of the VR. There, and there mm. was some weird stuff like that fucking that pirate game. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the, the the sky pirate game or whatever. Yeah, yeah, no thanks. The VR yeah, the, didn't look good. They did have a lot of VR stuff though. That's and, the and other game that Xbox too. has in the pipeline: Sea of Thieves. Which does not look very true, like 4K gaming, because it is also very cel shaded and like cartoony. cartoony. Yeah, because yeah. again, that's going to be a game that that sort of is meant to last. I so going can't. with that cartoony style works better than doing like something super realistic. But again, it looks like it looks more like an indie game than it does yeah. like a big triple A. I still game can't too. believe that it doesn't have a release date. Yeah, it's been in beta like testing like for months. No, and I months think and I, months. again they'll just announce it probably like a month before it's supposed to come out. It's the, our first proper rare game in like sixty years. We talk mm-hmm. about. Are you crazy. saying Connect Sports is not? It's not a proper rare game. It's just been a really long time since <laughs> Connect Sports even. Yeah, that's true. You know, or it, Connect Sports too. Yeah, with the, Connect, the one with more rowing. <laughs> Connect, which is also officially dead. <laughs> yeah, which is fucking weird. Yeah, which is which is weird because I did enjoy the Connect games that came out this week, uh, <laughs> like yeah. the Disneyland Adventures. We talked yeah. about that last yeah. week. Yeah, like like they discontinued the Connect and then put out a Connect game like three weeks later. Actually, there's it's still three two more coming. Yeah. Zoo. Yeah, Zoo Tycoon and, and then there's Disney Run. Yeah, I think they're both coming out. Uh, next they're out. Week. Oh, they're out already? I think they came out last week. I can talk oh. about them. Oh, we just, yeah. Well, I guess uh, Zoo just Tycoon just... is fun. It is graphically not great. It actually looks pretty good, but it does not run very well. And the Disney Run game is fucking hilarious. I love it. Yeah, because they were both, they were all 360 games. Yes. Yeah, 360 yeah, it, it, is, it is really fun. What yeah. the fuck is even happening? I get to play as Woody and Buzz, and it reminds me of Toy Story 3. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So let's move on. Because we've been <laughs> no, because we've been doing the podcast now for for like an hour and a half. Let's. let's oh wow, wow, wow! Yeah. We're just riffing. We're yeah. just riffing. We're, we promise we're gonna play games. We're gonna later. play. We want to play games. So well, we did have that pause. So you know. Yeah. That's including the pause. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um. So this week's new releases include the Xbox One X, the aforementioned coming out on Tuesday. Uh, Super Lucky Tale also comes out on Tuesday. It's a game that it, exists. It, it is a game. It's cheap. Um. Speaking of awesome games, though. Neo Complete Edition is coming to PC this week. That's the it's a version on PC that includes all the DLC as well. 
So that's going to sell like hotcakes. Yeah. Baby. That's going to be a, a big seller on PC, I think. Yeah. Uh, next up, Horizon Zero Dawn, The Frozen Wilds, and on <gasps> Tuesday. I have a review on Monday. I can say I've played it. That is all. Yeah. Uh, wow. Fair enough. Okay. We won't press you any further. But have you played Sonic Forces? Because that's out this week as well. Is that your reaction to Sonic Forces? Is that I, I don't know. Here? I haven't touched Sonic Forces and don't think I will touch Sonic uh, Forces. I, I've heard, here's what I've heard about Sonic Forces. It's complete dog shit. Well, we play, I, I played the demo. <laughs> that is not surprising. Yeah. <laughs> you can play the demo on the uh, Japanese eShop Ooh. For, uh, on your Switch. For 60 seconds. For 60 seconds. Because the demo only lasts 60 seconds and it kicks you you're, off. You're limited to playing for one minute at a time. What? No, yeah. Ju- yeah, just one minute, then you have to start over. Yeah. That is so fucking... Why? You can play as multiple characters, c- but you can only play... like hey, You can play as different characters, what? which all have different abilities. Hold on. But you can only play for one minute at a time. Got to go fast. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. It would... Of course... Some of the characters look so fucking bad. So the only good Sonic game we're going to get, like, ever is that one indie studio that made what it. What about Sonic, Sonic Mania? Mania? Yeah, exactly. The Sonic Mania one that, yeah. that was not made by... Hey, Sonic CD is a good game. Uh, yeah, so th- this is yeah, this is yeah, Sonic that came team. out like fifteen yeah. years ago, Ryan. Sega, I have some advice for you: fire fucking Sonic Team, every single one of them, and just hire the guys who made Sonic Mania. Make them make only the uh, and, Sonic, and games. then fire everyone who made that weird Hooters well, promotion. The thing and is, that, like that whole thing, because that was a disaster. The thing, the one thing I'll say about uh, Sonic Forces is, is that, and say, uh, Sonic Team specifically, is that they made a good game like this. Sonic Generations is a good game. It's not terrible and it's not amazing. It's good. But, and this was supposed to be like the pseudo sequel to that, except it's not good. They like fucked up everything that I liked about Sonic Generations. So it kind of makes me sad. I'm, I'm interested to see how it reviews next week. Because I, as from what I heard, no review copies to anyone. So it will find out yeah. after release date. Uh, sorry, Drew is just finding out about the Sonic Hooters promotion in Japan. If you at home should go home and look at the like the sad, sad display in the Hooters in Japan. Please don't do that with Sonic because it is very depressing. All they use is like a cardboard cutout of Sonic, <laughs> and then they hung up some weird little banners, and that was it. They at least they didn't, didn't even have an onion ring special. How the fuck do you have a Sonic promotion without an onion ring special? Have you been to Japan before? No, I have not been to Japan. They don't have two onion rings there. Oh, well, they could have brought them. And it's a Hooters. Who goes to Hooters in Japan? Well, I don't know who goes to Burger King I in don't, Japan. But there, oh, here it is. Here uh, it is. For the answer is me. Yeah, there it is. Oh, my it's God. It's so bad. But they get this, guys. At Hooters in Japan, you know what they have? Chili dogs. Yeah, see, the perfect promotion right there. Yeah. It Gross. writes itself. Onion ring. I could put the onion ring through the chili dog. Chili dog through the onion. Just, no. Yeah. Just, no. Ooh. Well, this is really All right, moving sad. on. Something very exciting for Brock. I wonder if you can wear a Hooters outfit in Sonic Forces, because then I'm sold. Maybe in the Japanese version. In the create a character mode or yeah. something? Maybe in the Japanese version it's an outfit. Yeah, look at that. Possibly. Up. Telltale's Guardians of the Galaxy Episode 5, Don't Stop Believing It's Out. I can't believe how quickly that came out. I can finally finish it's the It's finally game. over. I can finally start playing it. I can finally finish it. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, Football Manager 8, 2018 is out this week Ooh. for all that footy. I can't believe you can't even play the actual game. You just manage things. What a stupid game. And I can't believe it's not butter. That's what's, true. What's up? It, it's a brand. Uh, um, next up, yeah. Mario Party, the top 100 out this week. That's the, the Mario Party collection on 3DS of the quote-unquote 100 best Mario uh, like party games, essentially. Hmm. All right, then. Sounds like um, 70 too many. Need yeah. for Speed Payback out this week. Oh, there's a there's a trial out on EA Access that I've downloaded, but I haven't tried it yet. I've, what is that? I've been hearing some that's, serious uh, serious hate for that game. That's a new need, that's the new Need for Speed game. There's a lot of microtransactions. In 2017, a lot of microtransactions. Shocking. Yeah, it's almost as like games of service is a thing for Apparently EA. The story's pretty good until the microtransactions take place. That sounds. I, I feel like I've heard that story before. Mm-hmm. I mean, it might have happened once. Weird, or was, was it with an EA game? Yeah. Oh, now, weird. <laughs> there's one game came out this week that doesn't have microtransaction. Brock. Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy is getting re-released this week. Oh, right. That was probably the strangest <laughs> press release I have gotten in a very long time. I can't believe that game's coming back. This yeah. game came out in 2002. Yeah, because it was a PS2 game. For The PS2 was not good, was not very fun. No. Did not. It was good at the time, I think. Uh, no, I, feel like I don't think it was. I remember running it as a kid and hating it. This is oh. like a mediocre platformer thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now it's getting, well, you can now play it on Linux. 
So that that's no, no. Thing. It's also coming to Steam as and, well. Yeah, yeah. Which you, why I do not know. I, you know, I was sitting at home the other day and I was thinking, what games, what hot games can I play on on my <laughs> Linux rig? And now I know. Sphinx in the Curse of the Mummy. <laughs> Move over Oregon Trail. Yeah. I got Sphinx. Move play. over Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. We're going to play some Sphinx in the Curse of the Mummy. The original Half-Life. And Did they, I don't even think they upgraded the graphics or anything. It's just like the same they just, game. They, they just ported it. PS2. Yeah. yeah, I think that, again, if I remember reading correctly, the company that owns the rights to Sphinx is doing that this with more than just this game. I just don't think they've announced all of them yet because they bought a bunch of old licenses. That is so kind of like weird. Bubsy because that's what I, that's why there's actually a Bubsy game because someone some jackass bought the accolade license which happened to come with Bubsy <laughs> so they allowed them to make a new Bubsy game. It's like they're like like these fucking holding companies that like have the rights of jackass. <laughs> they have the rights to these fucked up things, man. Like yeah. Well, like, I mean, that, that's like like Atari. Like, this is why they're doing the fucking Atari box. Yeah. Because, like, some fucking insurance company in Wyoming <laughs> owns the rights to Atari or something. Or the... the oh, uh, no, that was, like, Coleco. Coleco. That was Coleco one that we talked <laughs> yeah, about. It was yeah, like, it was, like, weird, like, holding company in South Dakota <laughs> that specializes in, like... <laughs> Like, dr- like dri- drill parts and owns the rights to the accolade ca- uh, catalog. It, yeah, it's taken like ten months, but Ryan finally <laughs> said something bad about Bubsy. But it finally happened. Well, I, mean, like, I, can, I can just like like I can just hear you know like like uh, you know Shoebox Incorporated holding company. Pleased to announce new carbide drill bits for our fracking uh, rig and update to Blake Stone and the Alien Adventures. Like, what the fuck? Like, what is happening in the world, man? Oh, Jesus. Thanks yeah. for that laugh, Ryan. There's like I a, needed that. Like, trying to help, man. Like, like com- <laughs> companies that like, like buy like the... Uh, like the like drug patents and old video game licenses. Now, to be fair, Brock, every rose has its thorns. You know, a perfect game like Bubsy, you know, has has some bad sides, you know. Sometimes nope. you need to be able to talk about them. Uh, and last but not least, Doom for Switch comes out on Friday. I don't know if you, you just wait for the reviews, like Brock said. Yeah, I would definitely wait for the reviews. On yeah. That one. Um, so before we uh, wrap up the podcast and start playing some games, what have we been playing this week? Because I, uh, are we, because we've been playing lots of stuff. Yeah. Uh, or Drew? Yeah, we'll I, I finished Mario. I'm uh, on a quest to get all 800 stars. I'm at about moons? four, three moons, stars. There's, Power moons. There's there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of things to do in that. Mario game. 64 with stars. This is moons. Yeah. There's so there's they discovered 999 moons in the game, Power and moons. I have about 300. And there's only there's like 13 levels. I don't know where these moons are hiding. There's lots of because they're not the big like they're not huge worlds. They're big ish, but they're not huge. I don't know where they're hiding. So I'm on a quest to find those. I've been playing Mario. I played a lot of Xbox things this week. I played Super Lucky's Tale and didn't finish it because I just couldn't. I I I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to do it. Yeah. But if you need 21 easy as fuck achievements, that's your game. Yeah. Um. Fair played enough. that. I I did bring back Gears. I didn't get into Call of Duty or Madden, both of which I really wanted to play. Yeah. Um, Same here. I downloaded Call of Duty last night and haven't. Uh, I, I, this is the first time I've been excited for a Call of Duty game, and I, I think ever. I yeah. don't really know why I'm excited. I think we talked about this last week because you guys both seem pretty down on Call of Duty. I, where I was I, like, I'm excited. This I don't know. Great. I just I'm like, okay, cool. I'm back to World War Two. I'm I'm into it. I'm just mad on it. Oh, did you, did you guys hear the the great? The, there was a really funny like fake viral story being passed around mm. because of the recent allegations against uh, sexual uh, uh, harassment and assault allegations against Kevin Spacey. Uh, there was like a joke that was like they were going to replace Kevin, <laughs> oh, I Sp- this. Kevin Spacey in uh, uh, Call of Duty. Uh, Ad- Infinite Ad- Warfare. Ad- no, no, uh, Advanced, Advanced Warfare. Ad- Advanced Warfare uh, with Tom Hanks. Yep. Mm. Uh, and then someone else said. Uh, uh, because um, Netflix has stopped production on House of Cards, the current season of House of Cards, because of the Kevin Spacey thing. Mm-hmm. Another great headline was um, uh, 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 this just in uh, fake president held to higher standard than real president. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Kevin Spacey, uh, while I was at Thor Ragnarok last night, a trailer for his new movie premiered. Uh, it's called All the Money in the World, and it's about him kidnapping a 16-year-old boy. Kind of fucking weird thing to do. Uh, kind of weird to promote. Uh, kind of bad timing. Uh, uh, very awkward. That movie yeah. comes out in two weeks. 
Don't think it's going to do very well. Uh, I'm surprised they're going ahead with releasing it. Mm-hmm. That's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. Why it's got it? Matt Damon in it. Because the it's studio... got a few other. It's got like a pretty big cast behind it. Does he kidnap yeah. a six-year-old boy? And it's boy? very Kevin Spacey focused in the trailer. Does he kidnap a six-year-old boy for the it's sex? It's based on a true story. Is it for the sex though? I I don't know that part. Mm. Mm. Anyways, I played a lot of fucking games this week. Cool. Well, yeah. Uh, true. As for me. I've been playing more Mario and a little bit of Wolfenstein. Uh, I'm in the Luncheon Kingdom. I don't know how nice. close I am. You're, you're I, getting close. I'm yeah. also in the Luncheon Kingdom. The Luncheon Kingdom mm-hmm. is pretty great. Uh, the swimming around with the lava is a lot of fun when he plays the little fiery mm-hmm. dudes and they can mm-hmm. swim and jump in the lava. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or I guess it's soup at that point. It's pink. It, yeah. It's, yeah. Like it's pink soup. some. Well, it's toxic, whatever it is. Well, it's hot. Yeah. It burns you. Right. It's hot soup. It's mm-hmm. bubbling. Right. Right. And you are, are you still liking dude. Mario? I'm still liking Mario. Yeah. Like I said, and like I said in my review, I really like the game after the credits roll. Mm. It becomes a lot more fun and it becomes a lot more difficult. Yeah. Just up don't th- spoil it. Yeah. No. But like, yeah, up until that, I, I know you've been kind of on the fence about it. Yeah. And I feel kind of the same way where like I like it. I'm just not in love with it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like from everything everyone has told or told me about, the end game, I'm excited. To I play. still think it's far from a perfect game, though, and I, I I do think the reviews are very high for it, a yeah. little too high. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to, when we talk about game of the year this year, which is coming up. It's mm-hmm. like a month away, probably. It, it won't end up on my that. top ten. Yeah. No. Nah. No. No. But your top ten also won't have Persona Five in it because you're a monster. <laughs> no, probably won't. Probably See? won't. There you go. Man, uh, as for me. This week, I haven't played a ton of games, to be honest, because um, we've been sort of busy sort of putting this together. Um, But I do want to give a shout out to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Marathon on Twitch because (laughs) it's been keeping me entertained all week because, you know, it's time to duel. Also, Pot of Greed. Yes, exactly. (laughs) And they had these amazing Twitch emotes for for the chat that were just the Pot of Greed face. So anytime anyone played Pot of Greed, it was just filled with like... (laughs) (laughs) It was so good. That's so good. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I've just been uh, putting stuff together, so I've been a little bit busy this week. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about more games next week, like The Mummy Demastered and Call of Duty World War II and other things that I can't talk about yet. So yeah, so we're going to sort of wrap up the podcast here before we jump into the thing. For But for audio listeners, we have to give plugs, so uh, Drew Plugs go. Uh, I'm at D McMill on Twitter and uh, www.game-moves.com. It's a website, and things are there. You should go there. You should watch us live on Extra Life and uh, some of our other live streams and check out some videos. And if you're watching uh, or listening to an archive of this podcast, you can go over to uh, game-moose.com slash video and watch the video archives of uh, both this previous podcast and the archives of the uh, the Extra Life uh, stream where we're playing video games and yep. goofs and I'll be playing Super Mario Odyssey uh, uh, while these guys are playing other games and vice versa, and we'll be playing shit together. It's a good time. We're all going to sit down and play a nice game of Friday the 13th on NES together. Yes, we are. I'm going to cry a lot. (laughs) I like it when you cry. (laughs) You and your friends. You haven't played it yet, have you? No. Oh, my God. Well, I I almost feel like today should be the first day Brock plays that and Back to the Future. Yeah. Great. On NES. Great. Can you not play Back to the Future? That game's terrible. <laughs> but it's Brock's first time. Oh, God. <laughs> Just that loop. We, I'm hearing there's, that looping music already. There's things I haven't done, so we're, first we're gonna, time for me is Well, rare. actually, technically, if you're watching the stream what? now, if we raise $300, Brock is going to play Bubsy today. Yeah. So, we can do it, Which folks. Bubsy? We can do it. Close uh, Encounters of the Third Kind, right? Yeah. Jesus. Not the new it. one. Not the play, new one. Did you play the new one? Surprising, no. Surprisingly, Cla- Claws Encounter of the Third Kind... The good Bubsy game. Yeah. If I may say and so. It, and it's, it's, and it's, it's pretty bad. It's the best of the four of them. Yeah. Because Bubsy, I mean, two, Bubsy 2 is also like okay, but it's not. I just want to play Cool Spot, either. man. Yeah, Cool Spot was good. Cool Spot's my jam. But I don't have yeah. Cool Spot here. Well, then. We should get Cool Spot. Yeah, we should get Cool Spot. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, then this could be the Cool, cool spot. spot. Yeah. yeah. You're in the Cool Spot. Ah, speaking of that, you can find me all week on Twitter at Brock McLaughlin. Only just this week? I, I don't know. Maybe ne- I could be dead by next week. Yeah. I, I don't just know. had to say it. Yeah, uh, knowing so, the kind of risk of behavior you en- you engage in, that's a distinct possibility. So they find you at Brock McLaughlin, but where can they find you? You at can Wealth? find me online. I have a bunch of reviews coming out this week. Brockstargaming.com. You've been real busy. You can week. find me yeah. on this very stream every Sunday, mm. and you can probably find me at your kitchen table on Sunday morning while your mom makes me pancakes. Pancakes? Yeah. Mm. 
Last but not that's, least. That's, that's good. Like, that's good, like, recovery. For, it is. You know? it's, yeah. it's Especially something. since we'll be pretty tired. Yeah, you know like, your muscles saying? are all depleted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need mm -hmm. that juice. I also have to appreciate, too, the fact that you just come up with a new one of these every week. And yeah. they're, all, they're all solid. Improv, as Michael Scott would say. Yeah. yeah. Um, totally. Yeah. yeah. Good times. That's for me. Brock and Moms. You can find me on Twitter at Brock Ryan Turford. Brock and Moms. <laughs> you get that one for free. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turford. T-U-R-F-O-R-D. You can also find me on game moose as well game dash moose.com um again even though extra life will be over if you're listening to this after the fact uh you can actually still donate until the end of the year um if you want to help out uh sick kids as well because that's the reason why we're here today uh you can check us out again at game dash moose.com slash extra life it, it, it'll be on the video as well so you'll see it there as well um so again you can help out until the end of the year is when we're taking donations for that so yep. uh hit us up that'd be awesome anyways for Brock McLaughlin, Andrew McMillan. <laughs> I'm Brian Turford. This has been episode 101 of the Game Moose podcast, a palindrome. I feel like we're signing off, but we're going to be here all day. We are signing off to the podcast because this has to stand alone. Right. But, yeah. but still, we're not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah. And, and we're we'll out. We'll be here all day. <laughs>